Well, hello, hello, you lovely people. Mikey here. Oh, welcome to my room. We've got another quick tutorial. This one is going to be super duper quick. How to get your artwork onto your computer. Might seem like a really obvious thing, but actually I've had quite a few questions from some of you guys about this. So I thought I'd nip a little quick something together to show you how. Um, before I dive in, I just wanted to say a great big thank you to all of you patient people at home. I've had a bit of a break, seeing as I've been back off of holiday. Um, but you guys have made it very clear, very tolerate the video games, which I love. Um, it's all about the artwork. You want to see more art, more art tutorials. Gotcha! Okay, loud and clear. I'm slowly catching up with all of your comments again, so I will be replying to everybody over time. Just give me a chance. And um, as a little thank you, you'll notice that this is not my sexy anime Saturday sketchbook. This is my more standard alternative sketchbook. So we're going to grab any old picture out of here and use it to scan in. We're going to go over the first page because this sketchbook is full of all of the um, commissioned projects I'm working on, backup information. I've got some animations uh, plans in here, basically, and uh, some stuff about my manga that I'm working on as well. So it's kind of super secret. Um, so I'm just going to go into the first page, blah, which is a generic um, kind of Mexican David Ed skull drawing. Yeah, see? This is the kind of thing I draw when I'm bored, when I'm not drawing anime. So first things first, there are two main methods of getting your artwork, which is here, onto the computer, which is just off screen over there. The first method is to take a photo of your art and put it on a computer, um, which we're going to cover very briefly. But the other method, which is much, much superior, is to actually use a scanner. So I'm going to cover both. Firstly, the photography method, very useful if you have a camera, but you don't have a scanner. Um, a couple things that you do need to remember is that um, obviously you're seeing everything. Uh, there you are through the camera phone right now that I've got on this little makeshift majigger that hangs over the monitor. If you're going to take a photo through your camera of your artwork, there's some um, things you really want to do well. You want to be really well lit in a nice bright area. So we've got um, a lamp just out of shot over there, which is why you're getting this kind of bright patch on the camera phone here. What's really weird is that bright patch barely shows up in real life, but the camera phone picks it up. Yeah, technology. Um, and the thing is that the better you take your photograph, the less hard work you've got to do on the computer afterwards. So get your camera so that it's um, at an equal distance or on a flat plane to your artwork. Don't have it at an angle. Have it nice and flat. Keep it as still as you can and keep it in a brightly lit area. You can't take a really dark photo and try to mess around all the time. It's a pain in the ass. And another thing, and this is like the super best tip in the world, get yourself a daylight light bulb. What am I talking about? Well, if you look at the light bulbs in your own home right now, you'll probably notice that they've got a slightly yellowish or orange glow. Look for light bulbs, and I'll just look over the camera phone and bring this super close. There we go, it's in focus. Ah, uh, uh, here we go. It says day white, and then there's white, warm, white, warm white, and so on. Avoid warm colors. If you're going to do loads of artwork, painting, and want to take really kind of good shots, get yourself a white or sort of medium or cold colored light bulb. It will change your world forever. Ever since I've been using it, I've been much, much happier. Okie dokie. So as well as that, get yourself a steady hand or a tripod. Get a nice quick shutter speed. Take your photo, bang, load it onto your computer and work from there. So that's method one. Really obvious tips, but um, I mean it. Don't take shady shoddy photographs in the dark and hope that your computer will deal with it. You need to take a nice clean picture of your artwork straight off the bat. And then that being said, method number two, let's take this uh, just off screen over here and then ah, uh, jajang is to use a scanner. If you can afford it, I recommend it. This is, if I can get this in shot, it's all quite tight, a HP Scanjet 200. Um, <clears throat> two main things really. Firstly, I was able to buy this thanks to um, the advertising money I'd earned off YouTube. It's like my first ever YouTube purchase. So basically, I got this thanks to all of you lovely people at home. So thank you very much for this scanner. Really appreciate it. It helps me with the artwork. And the reason why I chose this model is because A, it was quite cheap in the world of scanners. And B, the lid opens along the long edge. So it opens this way. Oh, look. And you can see in a reflective surface how I just have a coat hanger that holds the camera phone on top, real ratchet stuff, but that's all you need to have fun. So it opens along the long edge, which is great, and most of them open along the short edge, which means there's more faff, basically. I really like how this one works. 
So you get your artwork, in case you've never done anything like this before, you put it face down and you stick it in the scanner and then you scan the art. You plug it into your computer and we'll have a quick look at some very quick settings right now. Well, hello everybody and welcome to my computer. So this is the HP Scanjet 200 um, little software package for scanning in your pictures onto the computer um, that you kind of have to download or install from the CD. It comes with loads of extras that it wants to install on there. Be very careful and avoid them. They're just a waste of time and space. Picture to HP Snapfish, never heard of it. Down here, I'm going to make sure that my scanned pictures get turned into lovely JPEG files. And round here, I'm going to have a little play around with some of these options. If we go into Advanced Picture Settings, I want to make sure that our output resolution, pixels per inch PPI, um, is set to 300. Basically, what this is about is that for every square inch of your drawings that you put in a scanner, um, it can either take a really, really, really detailed um, scan of them, so if you've got a really cool uh, high resolution image come out, but for file sizes so big it might crash your computer, or you can pick a really, really low resolution image with a nice, quick, easy file size, but it's not good for detail. You're not going to do your finest quality artwork there. So 300 for me is great for scanning in A4 pictures. Um, if I'm working on a poster or a real high end piece of commissioned art, I might go to the four to 600 mark. But 300 is going to work just fine right now. Don't let the software try to do something clever um, by understanding where pictures are. Just get it to scan the entire glass. Worry about it um, afterwards. So we've got 300 pixels per inch. We've got the entire scanning plane. Sharpens all right. I'll leave it on. So let's click OK. Output, save to file, save to file options. Where's this going to go? My scans. No, sir. Go to my desktop so all you lovely people at home, all you tasty, tasty humans can see. Excellent. And use monthly subfolder. No, just drop it straight onto the desktop, please. Let's see if we can get a scan going. Oh, HP scanning. Yay. Even though that picture just then. Oh, it's gone in the background. It was not a picture of my scanner. And here it is. You can tell that the picture is upside down already because I'm such a freaking professional. All right. Now, for those of you at home who've been using the camera phone method or just basically taking a photograph of your artwork, instead of scanning it in, all you've got to do is obviously plug your USB into your computer from your phone or camera and just drag and drop your files across. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to do that because that's so simple. There must be a hundred of them on YouTube already. So let's click on finish. Thank you very much. It's just going to take this picture and somehow turn it into a JPEG file for you lovely people. And if I might have mentioned that you human beings are tasty, tasty things, it's simply because I'm watching so many zombie films at the moment. Don't ask me why. I guess Halloween's coming up. Um, but everything is about eating brains and eating the flesh of a living. OK, done. Thank you, HP Scan Assistant. Here we have some things. Oh, here's Zombie Nation episode Season 1, episode 13. There you go. So we can close that. I don't need it. And here in the corner, we've got our picture. Righty-ho. So let's take this picture and just quickly talk about how we make things better. I'm going to get this picture here and I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. Yay! For those of you who have Photoshop, come get involved. For those of you who don't, don't worry about it. There's lots of free packages out there, like Sai I hear you guys used. I've never used it myself, so I wouldn't really know, but c'est la vie. First thing we're gonna do is rotate this image. I'm not gonna get into a hole, so you know just, well, what I'll do really quickly is I'll say what I'm doing, because I was gonna just do it without talking. Up here, you've got image. Over here, you've got image rotation, and along here, we've got 180 degrees all the way round. Fantastic. And he's a white way up again. Ugh, I'm losing my words. Right. So I'm not going to worry about cropping or cutting it out or anything like that. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial for this lesson. I just will really, really quickly say, if you go to your image again, go to adjustments and go to your brightness contrast, you can use these little sliders here to mesh around with your picture at home so we can just make it brighter or get the contrast right up so it's got some really crisp lines that's that's quite good and boom there you go already nice and simple you've got this nice dark scully skull character yay right everybody simple as that it's the end of a tutorial this one actually was quick for once in my freaking life so 
A lot of you people said, how do you get your artwork onto the computer? I thought, well, that's obvious, get over it. But then it wasn't. So I either scan it or photograph it, thanks to you lovely people. Scan it in, mess around with the settings, and there you go. 300 pixels per inch will do it for an A4 sketchbook. And one day in the future, I might show you some other pages from my hard work sketchbook, but we will have to see. Well, those lovely people on Patreon get to see it, but even now, I'm really, really bad at keeping it up to date. So bad, bad, Mikey Mega Mega. Click subscribe if you've liked this tutorial because that will help me out come join me for more in the future you lovely people and we'll continue on with gaming and other art stuff in the future next time around we do something with photoshop i've got to show you a really really cool thing that separates all your line art into its own layer it will change your life peace and love everybody goodbye <laughs>